Today's video is a video on hands-free walking. This video is perfect for any of you who feel like you need to grab onto something or you always need to be close to something so that you can at least touch it a little bit to make you feel more confident or prevent you from falling. Or if you envision in your head standing with your feet touching and not holding on to something that just freaks you out or you feel like you need to be touching something. So why does this happen? This is pretty common for a lot of kind of balance disorders. I will throw in this category a lot of the ataxias, uh, damage to your cerebellum after a stroke, or a growing, I think, body of people out there, which are people with what they call idiopathic polyneuropathy, where the nerves in the periphery or in the feet just start to break down and they don't really know why. I'm seeing a lot more patients with that specific diagnosis. If any of that applies to you, then this video is for you. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara, I'm a neurologic physical therapist, and on this channel we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, and mindset in the context of neurologic injury with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your rehab and your health to live an overall more active, more mobile, pain-free, happier, healthier life. Now, first and foremost, why is it so, so, so important that everyone learn to practice a little bit balance activities without touching something? Well, number one is, in, if you've been following me for a while, you've heard me really explain balance in a lot of videos. I will list those videos in the description below if you're new to this channel. But I talk about balance a lot on this channel and now we have different kind of balance reactions. Usually starts with our ankles. So if we get a little bit off balance, our ankle muscles can pull us back. If we get a little bit further off balance, our hip muscles kick in to kind of pull us back or pull our center of mass, our trunk, back within our base of support or our feet. And then the last resort is if we get way off balance and we can't bring it, bring our trunk back within our base of support, we do what we call a stepping strategy and that kind of moves the base so that again, our center of mass is within, within the base so that we don't fall. Those are called balance response reactions. Now I will add to that, one other balance response reaction, which is grabbing onto something. So the reason why I bring that one up is if you are someone who has developed the habit of always needing to be near something to grab onto it or touch it. Sometimes I refer to this in other videos as furniture walking, anything like that. What unintentionally happens is you bypass all of those other balance strategies. So let's say you're even getting a little bit off balance and you reach, which is very, very common. It's kind of a learned habit, especially if you're someone who has fallen or you know intuitively that those receptors in your feet aren't really giving you good information or you have some cerebellar damage and you know intuitively that when you get off balance, your brain just doesn't send the right signals. And so you either overcorrect or undercorrect, anything like that, very, very quickly, you learn that if you just touch something, you feel a whole lot safer. But what happens when you do that is that, again, you bypass the ankle strategies, you bypass the hip strategies, and you bypass that stepping strategy. And of course, touching is good for safety, but by bypassing all those other systems, those systems get weaker or probably aren't as efficient, right? So if I'm falling off balance, and if I even get a little bit off balance, I reach and I touch something, well then I didn't give my ankles a chance to kick in, I didn't give my hips a chance to do their thing, and I didn't give my brain that ability to utilize that stepping strategy. And so those reactions have a tendency to decline. Now, depending on what's causing this, there is not a guarantee that by practicing this exercises, you're gonna get all of these reactions back. However, by immediately resorting to this, you're also not giving them the opportunity to get stronger or learn how to adapt. 
So our brains are very adaptable. I talk about neuroplasticity a lot on this channel. I am a firm believer. And again, my belief or my opinion is not the only one out there. So I'm not saying that this is, you know, the only belief system, but if you don't use it, you lose it. And if you use it, you can improve it at any age. So forcing yourself to do some balance activities every single day where you are not touching anything. And we're going to go through that today because I know for a lot of you, you're already getting like really scared, like that's near impossible uh, for me to do. We're going to go through that. But if you are not doing that every day, those balance reactions aren't going to improve. But also the, there's the potential they could get worse. Uh, but third, by challenging the ankle, the hip, and the stepping strategies, you potentially, your brain potentially will adapt or find a new pathway, maybe around a damaged area of the brain, maybe around a signal that's not getting through. You know, your brain will find another way. So that's what we're going to go through today. Challenge those ankle, hip, and stepping strategies without using your hands to improve your overall balance confidence and to hopefully sharpen some of those other systems that you might unintentionally have avoided and therefore they have declined. So how do we do this? We do this, and I've shown this before, by starting in a corner with nothing around you. Now, again, if you're someone who has a history of falls, you don't want to do this for the first time on your own. You definitely want to work with a therapist. But if you're someone who feels comfortable, step one is to stand in a corner and bring your feet together. I just did this with someone and he swore there's no way I can bring my feet together so that they're touching. Absolutely not. Hard. No, I will fall. Even in the corner, he did not feel comfortable doing that. And so that's where we started, is just in the corner, working on bringing those feet together without touching anything, okay? So if you feel like you can't do that initially, touch the walls, bring your feet together, and then bring your hands off the walls. Now, you're probably going to sway. That's 1,000% okay. You do not, if you're not losing your balance at all, then the activity isn't challenging enough. Those, that little sway is where you're building those potentially new neural networks that'll kick in when you're not in the corner. So don't give up on this right away, but if you need to start touching and then bring your hands off the wall, I challenge any of you who feel like you can't bring your feet together and touch your feet together that you practice this, especially again, if you have any of the ataxias, cerebellar damage, uh, polyneuropathy, peripheral polyneuropathy, anything like that to practice this. Let your body sway, let your body possibly bounce off the walls. The goal is, is that you just kind of bounce off the walls less. Now, what I call this is defining the boundaries. So we have some defined boundaries here that are very safe and secure, and I can't go outside of those boundaries, right? Because I touched the wall. So for any of you that are trying to learn a new skill, having defined boundaries around you for safety, but also they start to allow your brain to relearn how to work within those boundaries or not get too far off line, right? So really for any of you that are trying to learn a new skill, setting secure, safe boundaries around you, then where you go from there is when you get really good at that, you step out a little bit. So now the boundaries are a little bit further out and you would do the same thing again. If you start with your feet wide and then try and bring them together, let them touch and try not to resort to that touching strategy, right? So I like to tell people to cross their hands across their chest. It'll just discourage you from reaching for the walls and you're just going to hold it. As simple as this activity seems, your goal is to hold this position with your feet touching until you don't sway or until you don't kind of start bouncing off the walls. You want to be able to maintain this. Then from there, you would go 
back to the corner. So we bring the boundaries in again to advance the foot position. So we brought those boundaries in, they're close again, and now maybe we try a stagger stance. Not really full tandem, because I know if you guys have been in therapy, you've worked on that before. But the next step would be just be staggered. Again, if you need to start with your hands on the wall, do that first and then bring your hands off the wall. Again, I like crossing the arms across the chest and you might bounce off the walls. You might lean back, um, especially if you have polyneuropathy because you do have some weakness in those ankle muscles that might not be able to hold your body weight forward. The goal is, is if you lean back, try and bring yourself off of the wall and hold that position. Again, if you start bouncing off the walls, just means you need to hold this position longer, do it more frequently. My rule of thumb is probably about 15 minutes a day of corner work. If you're someone that has some of those balance disorders, break that up any way you want, but don't progress too quickly, right? A little bit of sway is good because if you're bringing yourself back to the middle, then that's training your brain. But just bouncing off the walls and isn't really doing anything. The goal is, is that eventually maybe you sway a little bit, but you're not kind of bouncing off the walls and your elbows aren't pressing up against the walls. If that's happening, then you take that stagger step away and you go back to just straight standing. And then from there, and you guys have seen me do these progressions before, but I think it's so, so, so valuable for those of you with those balance disorders that we review this, is from there you would go to tandem. So now your feet are in a straight line. This would be the step right before kind of single leg standing. And same thing, you start with your hands against the wall. Once you feel comfortable, and again, if you bounce off the wall, or if you start to lean back, you just kind of bring yourself back to the middle and try and sway less. Now, feeling your ankles shake a little bit is not a bad thing. That is your, that's actually a good thing. That means your ankles are trying to keep you balanced. So you're gonna strengthen that system if you just can stay in that uncomfortable state of feeling like you're gonna lose your balance. Don't panic if your ankles are quivering a little bit. Again, that is just your ankles trying to kick in to help you stay balanced. And just hold it. All right, and then once you get good at that, the next step would be to go to single leg standing. Now, the important one for this one is that you want your foot in the corner. So sometimes people do this and then they'll lift one foot up. You really want equal distance from each wall because that's feedback, right? So we want these boundaries equal distance so that our brain kind of knows how far we're leaning to each side. And again, kind of start touching the wall, but the goal is, is that you can get into this position without using your hands. We're trying to get rid of that strategy of grabbing onto something to force these other systems to kick in and do a little bit more work. And then again, you just want to hold it. All right, then once you get really good at that, you move the boundaries out. So you step away from the corner a little bit and you do the same thing. If you find that you're bouncing off the walls again, then you just back up into the corner. That's defining those boundaries. Bring those boundaries back in a little bit closer and you hold that position. Now, boundaries also work for walking. So if you're someone, and this might be, if you've made it to this point in the video, you probably fall into this category of balance disorders. Maybe you're someone that you just really walk with a very wide base of support. Very, very common for a lot of the balance disorders I've mentioned in this video, that you walk with that wide base. Well, when you widen your base, again, you're doing it for safety, so don't stop doing that right away, but you're not giving a lot of those strategies a chance to either sharpen or adapt if you've lost the ability to make those little fine adjustments, or if you have ataxia, you've probably learned over time that you either overcorrect or you undercorrect. The cerebellum is very, very involved in kind of modulating movement. So if muscles are on and off, the cerebellum is kind of like a dimmer switch that can kind of 
fine tune those muscle patterns, firing patterns for maintaining balance. So that's why you feel like you either overcorrect or undercorrect when you lose your balance. So for walking, a lot of times we just put a boundary on one side. Again, the goal eventually is that your arms are not in what we call like a high guard position and that you're not holding on to anything so that we can give those other balance strategies a chance to sharpen, kick in, adapt, rewire, any of the above, they need to be challenged a little bit, even if you have cerebellar ataxia, right? So even if you have what some have been diagnosed with as a progressive disease, well, you definitely don't want those systems to get worse because you're always holding on to something. So there is opportunity to, in a safe way, continue to challenge some of those strategies to get a little bit better, those balance strategies. And one way is walking against next to a wall, trying to take steps with your feet closer together. I encourage people to walk forwards and backwards. Again, you only have one boundary here, but you, you can, can just kind of lean a little bit more in that direction. The goal is that you're not bouncing off of that wall and that you're not super wide with your feet. So maybe initially your feet are like six inches apart and then you progress to where your feet are in a straight line and they can step in tandem. But because you only have a boundary on one side, you still need to think about safety. So maybe initially it's just taking your feet from like 12 inches apart to like six inches apart and you just walk along the wall. Okay. Boundaries can also work great for other things. So let's say you're trying to return to playing golf, but you're not super comfortable that you could hold on to a golf club or swing a golf club. In that instance, you can do a very similar progression. Start in a corner with boundaries on both sides and just start little swings. Try and go from just wall to wall just getting used to it. So it's really just finding the appropriate progression where it's safe, but you're also challenging those systems a little bit to build your confidence up. So again, you're just going to do little swings. Go from wall to wall. Once you get good at that, you can expand out just a little bit. Just working on getting that trunk rotation and building your confidence up for eventually, potentially getting back out onto a golf course. And then from there, and I've used this quite a bit uh, in my clinic because I have a long hallway that doesn't have a whole lot of foot traffic in it, is we just practice hitting wiffle balls down the hallway. The nice thing about a hallway is you really can go through a full swing, although I don't recommend that initially. You want to start with maybe just like a little partial swing and follow through, but with a wall behind you. So typically someone will have a wall behind them. They've got the hallway wall in front of them, but there's still enough room that someone could go through a full swing. So just something to give you my rationale or my thought process so maybe you can recreate something like that at home. The other thing I've done is the golf course near us is the driving range is super super nice and they allow me to drive a golf cart right up onto the driving range and so I will put a golf cart behind someone and we will practice that way so that if they lose their balance backwards and in fact I've even sat down on the golf cart and put my own life on the line, not really, because I, I, I kind of know where a golf club is going to go, but I just sit right behind someone and hold on to them as they're going through that full swing initially. So that's just another way of kind of building a progression where you're not necessarily going from not doing it to trying to going back out there in wide open space and, and swinging a golf club if you haven't done it in a while or you don't feel comfortable or you have fallen doing that before, which I have heard happens. But the golf swing is just really one example. There's other re things that you can do 
other tasks when you're trying to learn them for the first time where this same progression works well. One is being able to touch your foot in standing. I recently did a video or I showed a clip from a recent live where someone asked that specific question as they wanted to be able to get dressed in standing. This is another great setup for that because you can kind of get in the corner and practice reaching for your feet. One other thing I'll bring up in this instance is there are a lot of facilities out there that always have you harnessed into the ceiling for safety. And there is a rationale behind that as they don't want you to fall. My biggest criticism of that is that you know you are in a harness and that changes the way your brain processes information. So I know that they do it for safety, but if you're someone that when you go to therapy, you are either always in a harness, harnessed to the ceiling, or every time you go to PT, you're always in the parallel bars doing all of your activities in the parallel bars. Well, you might want to incorporate some of this stuff at home because you, your brain is not training functionally in those scenarios. You're never going to be in a situation where you always have parallel bars on either side of you, and you are never going to be in a situation where you can be harnessed to something at all times. So these progressions would work great for that if you are someone, now do it safely, but if you're someone that you're always harnessed in when you go to therapy. And so then again, back to the corner, maybe you just start with just reaching down towards your feet for putting those clothes on, still in the corner, still safe, okay? Maybe you bounce off the wall a little bit when you do that. Well then just back up, get yourself in the corner, define those boundaries a little bit closer. And start there once you feel like you have your balance there you can step out a little bit in same thing reaching down trying to maintain that balance maybe you want to work on turning which i've shown before corners are a great place to practice that any of those types of activities or relearning any skills like that the take-home message is one Define your parameters, define your boundaries. Two is to really sit down and be thoughtful about a progression of activities. Break that skill down into its smallest components. The example I used in the dressing example was what do you need to be able to do to put your pants on in standing? You have to be able to stand on one leg. You have to feel comfortable having one leg kind of tangled up in some clothes right? And you have to be able to have one leg tangled up in some clothes, lift the other leg up and pull those pants all the way up. That is one example of how you would break a skill down. So again, for any of you that have any type of balance disorder, any of the ataxias or any type of a polyneuropathy where you feel like you're unstable and you're always keeping a wide base, this would be the progression of activities for you. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you're new to this channel and you haven't yet subscribed and you like these kinds of videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so that you will get notified every time I upload new videos. If you wanna go a little bit deeper and get your specific questions answered and get access to our entire my entire library of home exercises, link for that to sign up for that membership is in the description below. If you wanna get exercises throughout the week, head on over to Instagram and follow us over there where I post one to two exercises different from the exercises that I get post here on YouTube. You can head on over there and follow us over there. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.